and welcome to The Sheer Luck Show. I'm Olivia Wayne and joining me today are Charlotte Collins, Lou Huff and Pascal Day. Welcome ladies, Pascal, nice to be on with you first time. You too. Coming up on today's show, we've got some fashion in the form of everyone's favourite footwear of choice. Yep, yeah, Lou and Charlotte will be taking you through some of the best trainers in the shops right now. We'll also be reminiscing on some of the weekend's London Fashion Week highlights from Roxander to VB and that star-studded front row. Plus, I'll be meeting two seriously inspiring women, Laura Phelan and Abby Russell, founders of Beyond Body Confidence, to find out how we can all have a little more self-love. But first, well, first up, we're about to talk about London fashion. We should just mention we have just found out that Karl Lagerfeld has just passed away, aged 85, which is really sad it's news. So, so sad. And obviously, you two are the fashion you know, team here. Yeah. What, what's well, your interaction? Well, about? it was hint not hinted at but he didn't appear kind of to, to say thanks and kind of whatever you know to like give a wave at the end of the Chanel Couture show last month in Paris so that was and that was really out of character yeah. was that like unusual. the first time that was the first time and he hasn't looked great over the last few months um, and has been seen in public less and less so you know he's 85 years old not a huge shock yeah. based yeah. on that but like what a legend to have lost and god oh, yeah. such a loss for the fashion industry he is just so incredible, mm -hmm. such an amazing artist. I don't know if anyone's seen his um, documentary on Netflix, um, oh. Seven Days Out. It's about like the, the creation of a couture show. And um, I mean, he's just amazing. Yeah, a so, true legend, big boost yeah, to fill. Real, really sad, really sad. Interesting too. Yeah. Well, we did just hear, so we felt we should mention it. But yeah. let's now lighten the mood, but sticking with fashion and London Fashion Week. Yeah. Now, you two have picked out four shows to discuss yeah I guess all quite different yeah. in their presentation and what they offered let's start with Victoria Beckham well I mean Victoria Beckham used to show in New York this is her second London yeah. collection so nice a bit of a homecoming and I th this is the first one that has really garnered a lot of positive feedback from the industry you know she's first show first show that's really everybody's been really? like oh wow hello Do you think? Oh, yeah. I think it's been I think the last one definitely had a really positive response and a few before I don't mean that it's been negative before but I think this one has made everybody sit up and pay attention it's really like it feels very her that it's got she's really kind of found her aesthetic but it's really fresh and current and wearable yeah. as well it's really feminine and I think really modern and really beautiful I think mm. sometimes in fashion week you, it can get a bit lost yeah. in the spectacle and sort of obviously a lot of it is about the art and the creation but you know also how wearable it can mm. be yeah. and she definitely takes that Has it, isn't she wearable like Victoria yeah. Beckham stuff is yeah, wearable definitely. maybe yeah. you can't afford it but you yeah. can definitely wear it exactly it's exactly. really elegant mm -hmm. Front row, is she the front row we want to talk about? That, I mean, that is a front row definitely yeah. worth With Anna Wintour and then Harper, did I you see that? Oh, yeah. hello. Yeah, see you. That's one thing I could join in. <laughs> and also, I see you've uh, taken the nod with the bob. Oh, yeah, I thought it was Harper. <laughs> that was quite sweet, actually. I mean, yeah. was that weird that they cut her hair like that, or is it not related no, to you? No, I think it's unrelated. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Did you see that meme of David Beckham? With yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello. Very, very funny. Obviously, Obviously everyone's seen it. Funny. But no, very funny. All right, Victoria Beckham worked closely with Roland Murray at the start of her. Back in the day, yeah. That, um, that's my absolute favourite, I think, so far. Really? really? I, I love how relaxed it was. Everything basically had pockets, which I don't think is something you initially think of with Roland Ray. But I just thought it had, like, a real, like ease and class and sophistication but it was cool and modern I loved it yeah I think it's a brand that's come a long way people are, tend to associate it with that Victoria Beckham yeah. kind of shift dress yeah style. and that's oh, all yeah. I think still but so. no no it's, it's come a long way and Definitely. I agree wearable is another kind of key amazing word for that. separates um, and just I love the colours and mm. I just thought I thought actually that was a real that's not normally one that I'm like ooh must I, watch I really yeah. loved it it's very grown up yeah so watch out, because Zara, I'm sure you'll be copying that soon <laughs> so we can all get an affordable version of it. Okay, let's talk Molly Goddard. Well, speaking of spectacles, yeah. this is not a toned back um, show, but it's, I think, fans of uh, Killing Eve yes. will have seen that giant pink dress. That yeah. You know that? They really yeah. yeah. See? So, yeah, they're all in on this dress. Are so <laughs> I know that one. Um, so fashion. <laughs> so, and obviously that dress caused a massive stir yeah. last year, um, and we've seen the, the autumn winter 2019 version, version at Molly yeah. Goddard, Goddard, which was just the, I mean powder puff yeah, I don't completely. know how you describe it so like so many colours and also in the most amazing space it's really grand yeah. so yeah it looked amazing yeah. um I always felt the attention on the dress in Killing Eve was a little over the top. Don't get me wrong, it's an amazing dress, I, but why was there so much focus on it being the defining image of that show? I think it was more that it's um, surprising to see a show about strong, powerful women then incorporate amazing fashion as a kind of 
bystander. So it wasn't about the clothes. It was about this, like, you know, villain. Yeah. yeah. But she just happened to be wearing this incredible dress. dress. Yeah. I think it was the juxtaposition of right. that. And it's like fun herself. and quirky and almost could go like fancy dressy, but it's like yeah, sure yeah. and it's amazing. And but then she was a murderer and it was exactly. just, I think it was all of that. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Mm. I've always wondered. Um, and finally, Burberry. The tale of two halves. <laughs> like, I mean, literally, like, I feel like he's, Ricardo, he's just been a bit greedy this season and was like, I like this style and I like this style, so I'm <laughs> yeah. just going to do both. Okay, okay so for both, those that basically. haven't seen the collection, tell us. So the, the um, second half is slightly more traditional Burberry, as you sort of was, would imagine. And I guess he's obviously catering to both markets still. Very sophisticated, clean, that sort of camel, traditional mm. Burberry colour. It's got the check, amazing trenches. Absolutely loved it. How many times can someone redefine a trench? No, but you, they can because they're yeah, Burberry. They right, okay, they but just so, yeah. Yeah. And, and, it's, and it's more like an evolution. It's sort of, it's, it's keeping it. It's in keeping to its sort of tradition and, and what mm. they're known for. It's the brand's it's, like identity. Yeah, but it's just kind of keeping it modern and updating it slightly. And it's these, those little tweaks, I think, that make it feel fresh and current and mm -hmm. amazing. But yeah, then the second the half. The second half was um, inspired by the youth of today and is very London. Youth. Very those youth, youth. I know. Um, yeah, very London, very street, um, taking athleisure to a whole new level. So, so is that pleasure? Well, I mean... It's, it's it's probably true. new gen athleisure, yeah. so it's not you know size stripe pants in like an Adidas way. It was a lot of like, you know, kind of fashion cut jumpers and very sporty trainers. The beauty look was particularly interesting. I'm sure people saw images of Gigi Hadid with like you yeah. know these kind of slicks curls, um, curls oh. against their forehead. Um, so yeah, really taking so that kind different. of street yeah. angle. And yeah, and there's been a bit of that across Burberry even even before Christopher yeah, yeah. Bailey left. Like, um, you know, they've they've definitely been one of the brands who's, who've jumped on that like kind of modern aesthetic but yeah. this was a step too far for me. Yeah and the last show also had that real two different sides to it um, but yeah it really it, it really interesting to watch I thought. I think we could talk about London Fashion Week all day, but Sorry, we mustn't because yes. <laughs> we want to hear Pascal's voice. Yeah. So let's also talk now about female friendships. I'm going to start with you, Pascal. <laughs> okay, so new research conducted by the Book of Everyone has found that the average woman has six best friends over their lifetime. What do you reckon? That seemed valid to you? When I first heard it, I didn't think that was true. But then I thought about it and I was like, actually, I think that is true because, like, when you go through different stages of, like, school, when you're in primary school, you have one friend and then you move on to, like, secondary school. And, like, sometimes that stays the same, sometimes it changes. But I don't think you necessarily just have, like, this one best friend and then this other best friend. I don't know like that, that it's that you um, have to switch them in and out. Yeah, Maybe you can just like keep adding. Yeah, yeah. cumulative. Yeah. It, was, it was vague, the research, so we'll keep <laughs> yeah. it vague. One in ten women, though, admit they have more fun with their best friend than with their significant other. <laughs> But do you know, it's not a thing. I mean, why not? You could have probably a really girly, giggle, hysterical yeah. laugh at something that maybe your single mother might be like, mm, yeah. not funny. Yeah, I don't think Whatever. it's an either or thing. I think no. it's yeah. a different purpose. Um, one in four women said their best friend knows them better than their other half. I don't think. No, I'm no. not sure. Well, I, I, again, maybe at different times yeah. in your life. Yeah, like yeah, if it's yeah, like yeah. a casual boyfriend and yes. your best friend, yes. Hopefully yeah. your husband or life yeah. partner should know you. Or they didn't know you when you were growing up, for example. Um, uh, ours did, but yeah, yeah. most yeah, people yeah. hope, like, most yeah. people yeah. expand out of it. Yeah. I just well, have left do. my, my yeah. four-year-old friendships. Yeah. Um, okay, so yeah, we all have great best friends. Actually, my best friends are from when I was seven. They still are. There's five of us. So, yeah, that's that, quite, I think that's quite rare. Me too, so I've got exactly fun. the same. Yeah. Well, we both went to the same school, so, which you all know. But, um, <laughs> but different we met. Different groups. Yeah, different, and different years. Yeah. I'm yeah. way older. Yeah. But um, ultimately, yeah, we met in year three and we formed our friendship mm -hmm. and we just stuck, even though we moved around different unis, different yeah. everything, yeah. we still stuck together. Well, I didn't even move that's around, really we nice. went to the same uni. Oh, did you? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, what am pretty I talking really? about? So did we. Some of us just took gap years, so yeah, we weren't like together. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, ultimately, we stuck together. Anyway, moving on to not sticking together. Editing your ex out of old photos. Edit my ex gives people the chance to remove their ex from photos, leaving only positive memories about the painful reminders of past relationships. I'm saying this all like flippantly, but a heartbreak is, can really be awful. I actually went into a depression after a heartbreak because I spiraled so, so I get it, I'm not being yeah. whimsical. However, personally, even if I took him out of the, of the um, picture, I don't think I'd look at the picture and be like, ah, oh, and now it's a wonderful <laughs> yeah, memory. Okay. So yeah. that's more of a like, 
ha ha about it because it's like really and also like what are these images for like are <laughs> yeah, they what do you mean? frames that yeah. you've got like you've got a little <laughs> so hole true. in or like I don't know just don't look at those pictures or then decide when you want to and then just accept that there's someone in there right mm-hmm. and that's kind of so what's your view on well, it I think it's probably only I don't think it's about like pics of the two of you on holiday together I think it's about if there are memories that you do really want to preserve for example if you were at like a family wedding and he was in pictures right okay right yeah. like then you might think okay well we kind of want these photos let's let's ditch him um so I think or you know my, like if you go traveling together like properly traveling mm, yeah. and you've been to some amazing places yeah okay. I get that and t- like if you were at Machu Picchu you yeah. climbed it you'd be like god I would be like in 30 years want to look back at this yeah, yeah. when I won't even care about him but I don't need him in it exactly um, I feel like sure if you want to do it why not yeah. you know I don't know I'm like intrigued by what they're put in his place. I think you suggested a vase, didn't you? Yeah, it's just like... Oh, I don't think... Wouldn't they just kind of... Me and my vase in the Grand Canyon. What, if you're... You mean if you're like this? Yeah, like... Yeah, but if I think it's more like if you're standing, surely they don't replace something, they just remove. I'll tell you what, look at Diplo's Instagram. Do you follow Diplo? No. Big music producer? He He was... He's in... Oh, Cape Town, actually. And anyway, in the sea, and he's like, oh, random people behind. And then he's like, oh, thanks, John Mayer, who has photoshopped those people (laughs) out so that he's alone. John Mayer has Yeah, well, you know, famous is no famous is. Wow. It's really funny. Just watch... Look at his Instagram and you'll see. I think it's probably more sophisticated than holes and vases. (laughs) Oh, yeah, proper... Yeah. 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 Although it's an app, so is it? Anyway... Finally, millennial manners. Pascal, you wrote a piece on the new manners of millennials, but we also have some facts from a survey carried out by our time, .co.uk, whatever, that compare (laughs) old-fashioned manners with those of young people today. So, do you want to tell us a bit about your manners piece first? Yeah, so um, I spoke with a uh, manners expert, etiquette expert, um, called Paul Russell. That's a good title. Yeah. yeah. And he was just telling me some things about, like, how long we should wait before we, like, take pictures of our lunches. And also I asked him how many glasses of Prosecco you should have at a bottomless brunch. And he said two. Yeah, what? He's got, he knows nothing. Yeah. That's, that's not manners. That's just four. stupid. That's yeah. not value for money. <laughs> yeah, it's not value for money. <laughs> it's a buy two. Would, were you like, hello, please, could I ask you your advice, please? Thank you so much. Were yes. you very aware of your own manners when talking to Thank him? Thank you oh so much. Oh so much. <laughs> oh, so much. Um, okay, so let's get to the stats. 75% of over 50s would not appreciate chatting about sex compared to 32% of millennials. I totally I get, get that. that. Well, okay. Do you or don't? No, I, yeah, I they do, do, get, I do yeah. get that with yeah. older people. But also, aren't they a bit... Well, it depends how you're... If you're talking about in a romantic, personal way, or is it sex generally, mm. or, you know? Mm. Yeah. There's lots of details to these stats that I'd like to know. Okay, um, 82% of over 50s don't want to discuss money compared to 33% of millennials. I still find money a bit taboo. Yeah. I think that's, I think, we'll but that is there, a known thing. Yeah. We'll like, watch out the show on Thursday. I think we're talking about money oh, more. Great. So. Um, yeah. Um, okay, and finally, let's just. This one really struck me that the majority of over 50s, 85%, are confident in texting and messaging, much more so than their younger counterparts, of whom nearly 80% sometimes struggle with what to write, which I just find mind-boggling because we don't speak on the phone. We yeah. only text. I, I don't know. If you text my mum, <laughs> she is very into texting and she will send very long texts. That's true. Yeah, they I definitely send long like messages. Long, yeah. I think, like, millennials may prefer, like, a WhatsApp chat, like, question, it, it, question, uh, question uh, uh, exactly. Yeah. Emoji. Whereas, it, like, yeah. I'll often get, like, a really long <laughs> yeah, message with yeah. a lot of things oh, that are covered story. and I have to, like, go Do you know my brother story? does that's so annoying? He does that one-line texting. I, I, I've got friends that do that. It's really I'm bad. like, yeah. can't you just write it all and then send <laughs> I don't need it drip feeding. But then it's because he's on his computer doing it. Mm. Oh, yeah. so annoying. Oh. I, can I say, I think that stat probably comes from people being um, nervous. I think our generation, we've all kind of been burnt and we are a bit scared of wording things incorrectly in like mm. email probably more emails or texts I think it probably means if you have something to say rather than just like General. chatting with your mates mm. then we're more cautious well my mother-in-law's yeah. advice never write anything down uh, well, yeah. <laughs> which is probably you know yeah, what I mean like she, she told like my seven year old niece don't write it in that birthday card because it can come back to bite <laughs> um, anyway I think that's all we have time for on that after the break though Charlotte and Lou will be delivering a dose of weekly fashion as they take a look at some of the best trainers don't go anyway Who the fuck is that? Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> it's nearly Valentine's Day. It is nearly Valentine's Day. Do you think that's what it is? Oh my god, why did that get on there? 
I am loving this. Who's that from? I don't know. How's Jonesy with the spray can? Jonesy's been skiing all weekend. It's not Jonesy. We are at the London Cooking Project. What's on the menu for today? Sea bass, bok choy, lime, lemongrass. Any herbs that you really have as well. That's Asian sea bass cooked in a bag. What a fun day. How's it taste? Oh my god, that's so good. It's delicious. Mm. Thai curry prawns. Yeah. Oh my goodness, that looks good. That is yellow Thai prawns. So good. Mm. That is my dream dear. And I'm about to do a Success Stories podcast, my favourite podcast, with Holly Tucker. Good morning, Holly, and welcome. Oh, hi. hi. One of the co-founders of Not On The High Street. Pumped 600 million into the UK economy. I had a summer job from the age of 15. And on the day of my A-level results, I had the choice of actually going to do an art degree or I was going to go after a job. And I got that job. I made that decision that I was going to go to what I now call the University of Life. How did it go? It went very well. We could have chatted definitely Trainers are as much a part of our capsule wardrobe these days as white t-shirts, but it doesn't just have to be a pair of white trainers anymore. There's a whole spectrum out there that we're going to show you today because you really can do anything when it comes to trainers. You really can. Even look at these, I'm like, yeah, I kind of need all of these yeah, in my wardrobe. I agree. So let's first up start by talking about Vea, yeah. which is a brand people probably have started to hear about by now, but very much an emerging brand over yeah. the last few months. Definitely. Um, I think they've got some really good styles, lots of different shapes. They also have a vegan range. Are they um, not all vegan? No, not all of them. These oh. ones aren't. Um, but oh, everything well. is, all their produce is all organically sourced. They've got a very big sustainable message. Mm -hmm. So really, really great brand values. And they're, if you know, style-wise, they're that kind of basketball style, yeah. um, quite sporty, quite masculine. Yeah. Um, but I think at this point, we all just kind of have to accept that white trainers are quite masculine. You yeah. know? They're not, there's nothing really feminine. Definitely about them so but then these are plain white but then you can oh, yeah. get some sort of soft pink there's some red mm -hmm. some blue so i think you know you can play with color a little bit or just go with the classic all white sure um and also they're a good price point they are indeed. they're around the 100 pound mark yeah um okay next up jigsaw a surprise trainer hero mm, really nice this shape is kind of a bit like the common projects which i think they were sort of that very classic very masculine, but mm -hmm. like basketball style. Yeah. Um, these are a little bit more feminine and they're so soft. Yeah, they're so soft. They're so smart. The common projects are like 225 pounds. Yeah. These are just under 100, I think. Yeah. So um, making them a really great option. I think they're just so smart, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, really clean. Really clean. I love that little detail there as well. Yeah. Very cool. I've got a very similar pair to these that I always wear with a tailored trouser. I mm. like that sort of juxtaposition of the two. Yeah. Um, I think they're really cool. And if you are worried about looking a bit too masculine, just an ankle on the show. Is, yeah. We'll fix that, won't it? Exactly. Okay, next up, Erin Grace. This isn't a brand that I know much about. Yes, these are actually one of my favourites. So these were created. They are incredibly soft. So they're called Erin Grace. Apparently, it's the base is meant to be like walking on a cloud. Ooh, wow. um, and these are their slightly more um, cleaner styles in terms of sort of a white and a grey, but they also have like um, they've got leopard print, they've got glitter, oh, they've got they've some really yeah, colourful yeah, yeah, yeah. styles okay. as well. So these are the slightly more pared back, but if you want to get something jazzy, which you totally can with trainers, we've got a pared back version here, but um, they are insanely comfortable. And I like that they're a mix of the suede and leather as well. If you don't yeah. want that like stark white look, then these are quite good yeah. between. And them. they also have like, it's not a wedge, but it's slightly lifted. Oh. So just to give you that like little bit of height. They do feel they've got like a nice little bounce. Yeah, on but they are just, they are honestly are so, so comfortable. Cool. And they also have like not a high top, but it comes up a little bit high and it's got a little zip there. And they're if you want something a bit more um, fashion. They forward. do. You're right. And they're 149 pounds. So again, not too much because you really are going to live in these. Exactly. Aren't you? Okay. Next up, Golden Goose. These are slightly at the higher end of the spectrum, yeah. but you can't really beat them for comfort, can you? No, exactly. And again, I love the like the little color details that they have. The, with these are the black, but they also come pink, oh, glitter, I mean, they have everything. leopard. Yeah. Um, really, really cool. Yeah, really cool. And everybody, I don't have a pair, but everybody who does. At Absolutely swear yeah. by them, don't they? Um, and you don't even really have to do the laces. You know, they're the kind that you slip on, slip off. Like, yeah. You can just feel that leather is just, you know, so, soft, so soft, isn't it? So, so soft. I think just with all of these, you've just got to keep them clean. Yeah. So just like a little white down, like nothing is nice than a box fresh white trainer. Yeah, but agree. actually some of the Golden Goose are that sort of, that very lived in already. These are a, mm. a kind of cleaner pair, but some of them do have that. There's a lot of distressed styles yeah. out there. And it's also a look that's really been copied quite a lot. There's a lot of mm -hmm. star print trainers out there, but just look for the Golden Goose. Yeah. Slash DB. So we know you're in the right place. Yeah. Okay. 
these aren't white, obviously, but no. we couldn't let a trainer haul slide without talking about a sportier pair. Because yeah. actually, sometimes an outfit demands something a little bit tougher than just a plain white pair, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. And I really like, actually, that these are in black. Mm. I think sometimes, like, it's nice to have, uh, to mix up your outfit a mm -hmm. little bit. And I think these with, like, with leather look really cool. Really cool. Also with white in summer, if you're wearing yeah. something really pretty and soft, it's quite nice to toughen them up a bit. Um, I swear by Adidas for something comfortable. Yeah. yeah. And these, you can feel these, you're going to bounce in these, aren't you? Yeah, they really Taking, are. Yeah, those days when you just, you know, you've got a load of running around to do. Yeah. You can't really beat them. I just, I love these. Yeah, me too. They're really and, cool. And I, I always talk about how things travel, but like, I think they would, they sort of, they would mm. squash up well, wouldn't they? Yeah, they really would. It's that nice fly knit fabric. Yeah, really love nice. them. Okay, Converse. I think perhaps people wouldn't necessarily expect the Converse to appear in a haul because yeah. they've been around for a long time, but that doesn't make them any less valuable. I still have this exact pair and... They're just a go-to, aren't they? They really are. They're such a classic. And I actually think the high top is way cooler than the flat, yeah, sort of yeah, the original yeah. pair. Um, and I just think, like, how you style these as well. I love these with, like, a slightly cropped, like, a straight, slightly more boyfriend mm -hmm. jean. Yeah. You know, wrap the laces around. I just think they're awesome. Yeah, I agree. Don't start, you know, doing them up really tight, wearing no. them a pair of skinny jeans. They need that kind of, it's almost that, like, skater boy look, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. To kind of toughen them up. Um, all with a dress, really, really nice. When, you know, when your legs are a bit tan in summer, yes. really, really easy to wear. Exactly, and I think these probably look better when they're more lived in. These are maybe slightly too yeah, clean these, right yeah, now. Um, so they need a, a lot of love. But, you know, when we did our, our wardrobe tour with Gail, one of her tips, I think, when you're wearing something really feminine is to go with a trainer. Yes. It just sort of toughens it up a little bit and makes you maybe feel a little bit more casual when you're wearing something a bit more pretty. Exactly. It's a hack to make your evening pieces work in the daytime. Exactly. Isn't it? Okay, and finally... These bad boys from Bashka. Which arrived yesterday and we were both like, these are amazing. Yeah, these, first of all, they are so light. We've seen a lot of these chunky trainers yeah. around in, <clears throat> excuse me, this season and they're normally really heavy and yeah. this pair isn't. And I think that sort of ugly dad trainer we saw loads of, we thought it was going somewhere it's definitely here to stay, basically. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and it's sort of evolved. And I think these are a nice mix between yeah, the two. Yeah, these, a lot of them are very aggressive. Yeah. So if that's not for you, these, uh, even in, having seen them online, seeing them in real life, yeah. they're, they're nowhere near as over the top as a lot of these other pairs, or even as they look online. And no. so they're kind of a nice hybrid between something a bit sportier and, and that trend. Yeah, and I love that shape. It's almost like on these as well, where it's, I don't know, it doesn't have a proper tongue. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're a little bit more streamlined, yeah. I think, than some of the others. Agreed, and really easy to slip into. I also love, how these are like hiking boot laces yeah. as well, which is a nod to a whole other trend as yeah. well. Yeah, and some good colour pops in that. Yeah, some really good colour pops. Nice for just dressing up a kind of monochrome outfit. Yeah, um, We must give a shout those. out as well to a similar Sandro pair that I believe are going to appear on the screen yes. right now that we have both fallen a bit in love with. Yeah, they we? are amazing. I mean, they are pretty extreme. I think depending on what colour you're going to go for, but yeah. just so cool, I think, to add to any outfit. But if you are going to do that look, I would go pink. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Okay, well, um, for everything you've seen here today, do check out the show notes below. Don't go away, Olivia is going to be right back with some very inspiring women. Hi, I'm Nikki, founder of Barcore. Today I'm going to show you a quick barcore workout you can do in your living room or anywhere. Today we're just going to use our body weight for resistance. You don't need any props, just a little bit of space in your living room or wherever you might be. And what the key things to remember are is to work as small as you can. I'll say tiny little movements like up an inch, down an inch, and that is to keep you in an isometric contraction where all the blood flow will go to your muscles to create that little movement, but you'll also feel a burn and a shake. And if you're feeling that, it's exactly what you should be doing and feeling. So try and stay in it. And if something doesn't feel right, come out of it, reset, and join, jump back in. So let's get started. Hands on your hips. Now here's a shocking statistic for you. Up to 96% of British women are unhappy with the way they look. Joining me today are two women on a mission to change that. One is a curve model and body confidence advocate. The other is an eating disorder specialist. Together, they are building a community based on improving people's sense of self-body image and their relationships with food. I'm pleased to welcome founders of Beyond Body Confidence, Laura Phelan and Abby Russell to the show. Welcome, ladies. Thank you so much for coming. Now, for those of us that have no idea what building body... Beyond, why do you keep saying building? It's so weird. <laughs> Beyond Body Confidence, tell us, what is it and why did you set it up? 
Yes, so Beyond Body Confidence is a movement, an initiative, and it's about creating a community of women that want to look beyond what they look like. We've got incredible movements which are raising up the voices of all women, diverse bodies, but we also want to look beyond that, and we don't want to be objectified anymore for just what we look like. How did you two come together, though? I mean, have you two known each other a long time? Tell us your story. So um, we kind of met mutually through um, friends, through kind of Instagram. Um, hey, it's the way the world works. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know. Yeah. And um, we've actually only known each other for a year. Just over a year Just over now. a year. Yeah, so not that long at all. <laughs> no, um, but we just clicked when we met. Yeah. And um, we put on our first event together. Um, and we just loved it. And good vibes between us. Um, we just wanted to combine our passions together yeah. and create Beyond Body Confidence to really maximise the exposure of what So the doing. event we ran when we met together was Embrace, so it's a documentary and it was about a woman who goes across the world and interviews women who have been in accidents and who have been through things which has really tested their ability to accept how they look. And so when we met um, and just got talking as you do, that was kind of what we realised we were both really passionate about. Mm -hmm. So once we did that event, we thought we've got to bring this to life. Like there are so many women out there like us who, uh, you know, want to just feel more worthy than just a body. Tell us yeah. a little bit about each of your own stories then. Yeah. So, Abby, let's start with you. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, I'm a bit of a rare gem, and Laura calls me her unicorn, because I'm someone who's, from a very young age, has just been very confident in myself, and just had very good self-esteem, self-worth, and what I've realised growing up, and speaking at things, and speaking to people, is that... Um, that's quite, that is very rare. What do you put that down to? Do you know? Have you thought about um, it? Where it comes yeah, from? well, I put it down to um, my mum being a very positive woman in my life. Um, she's a plus-size woman, but i never seen her talk badly about herself. She was never on a diet. It was always positive, positive things about ourselves. And also, um, my parents never put pressure on what I looked like. It was very much about being a good person in the world rather than... Your looking looks. good yeah exactly yeah. Um, just and a bonus that she does <laughs> yeah yeah you just lucked out on that one but. Um, yeah so and I think just it's just part of your personality as well I guess yeah. um, but I went to go on to train in musical theatre uh, when I left school and I gave that a go for a bit and then just ended up kind of following falling into doing modelling and then that just helped m spread my message of body confidence um, yeah it's kind of gone from there really yeah. Okay, and how about your story? So mine is quite different. Yeah. <laughs> so for me, unfortunately growing up, I was always really shy. Um, I always did well at school and all those things. I had friends, but I always felt kind of very timid and believe it or not, didn't like talking and now you kind of can't shut me up. So <laughs> when I was a teenager, I developed anorexia nervosa. And for me, it didn't start as something where I hated how I looked or anything like that. Um, it was very much a mental illness that kind of just caught hold of me. But in that whole process, um, I definitely loved lost a lot of self-esteem and then going on to recover it obviously makes you really hyper aware of your body and, and very obsessed with food and what you look like so my recovery journey for me um, was a bit of an epiphany moment I guess and it really crystallized that you know no matter what I looked like that was never going to be as important as how I felt about myself and once I worked on that and it took me a long time um, the other stuff just doesn't matter you know, um, it's it's great to say to your friend, you're, you're gorgeous, you're beautiful, but it's even better to say, I love that you're so kind, look at that amazing thing that you've done. And I think it's just about getting that balance and, you know, taking the focus off that, because that for me really, really helped me fully recover, essentially. I mean, that is an incredible message. And as a mum, I'm hyper aware of yeah, kind of, of the phrasing you yeah. say to your kid as yeah. a throwaway comment, maybe. Yeah. I have a son, so it feels different. But yeah. with my friends who have daughters or my nieces, yeah. I don't want the first thing to be like, you look so cute today, yeah. you know? Yeah, it's yeah, more, yeah. you've really yeah. got to think about it. Yeah. Yeah. Who are you targeting with this? Who's, you know, who are you yeah. trying to really reach right now? We were talking about it last night, mm -hmm. and essentially women, because women, women can relate to us. I yeah. definitely think, you know, 25% of men um, can have an eating disorder. So equally, I want this message to help anyone. Yeah. But, but we were saying yesterday, you know, we hope that for young women, women in school, women who maybe are open to social media, we can be a little, little bit of a, a leading voice for them and then a voice which tells them that they don't have to be focused on what they look like. But equally, as you've said, mums, yeah. older women. It's about kind of helping that generation that's yeah. growing up now. Yes. Like we want them to have almost the experience that I did and be yeah. happy with themselves <laughs> all their lives. You know, yeah. we don't want people to have to go through these horrible experiences in yeah. life. But we were almost fortunate that we didn't grow up with social media. Yeah. yeah. You know, so ways. it is a, a really tough 
tool to navigate. Mm, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned a double-edged sword earlier yeah, to me. Yeah, yeah it, it is, is that. It is. So you're using social media as your way to speak your message. So what does that involve and how do you go about it? Well, well we've, got our <laughs> <laughs> we've got our joint page now on Instagram, yeah. Beyond Body Confidence. Um, and for us, we talk a lot about social media and how you need to be, you need to be careful about who you're following yeah. and, and who you're not. And, um, smart scroll, I call it. Yes, if you're going to be scrolling. on there, smart scroll. Diversify mm -hmm. your feed. Mm -hmm. Take responsibility for the fact that if you're on there, you're going to see some unhelpful messages. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you can navigate it somewhat, as you said. Yeah, definitely. And it's just been hard. It's been hard on yourself and being like, is this person giving me negative yeah. thoughts about myself? Then unfollow or mute, yeah. you know, because yeah. you, you, the amount of times that we look at Instagram or, or yeah. any other feed, um, it's quite a lot when you rack up the numbers. Yeah, we all, all get stuck all in the day. vortex of social media. Unfortunately, you can find out quite quickly on your phone how long yeah. you're on well, as yeah. well. Yeah. I know. Yeah. But <laughs> once if you're a younger girl and it's your yeah. circle of friends, know. Yeah. you know, cool. how do you, or what do you suggest to navigate around that? So if they're comparing themselves to their friends? Well, or, or not even comparison, but Just as you following. said, if they don't make them feel good, but it's mm. their friends in real life make them feel good. Mm. So I, I worry more about the 14, yeah. 15 mm. For sure, because that was old. when I was really vulnerable. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. I think, again, it's just you can be someone's friend, but also, you know, and it's very hard if you're that young. But, you know, now we're very vocal about if you've got a family member or someone close to you. And we do it to each other, too, if we need it, <laughs> um, if they've known each other. Yeah, pull, pull people up on things. So yeah. be honest about what feels difficult for you to be involved with. If you don't want to engage in diet talk, eject yourself from the conversation. Yeah. It's all about self-preservation and protecting yourself. Right. Mm. Um, because it's not going to help your relationships with people mm -hmm. if you're feeling that. Um, that kind of way. Yeah. It feels like what you're doing is very, very relevant right now. Yeah. Jamila Jamil's just done her I Way yes. kind yes. of account mm -hmm. and she's a hugely vocal voice yeah, yeah, in this. Yeah. Um, do you align yourself with that? And, you know, what do you think of it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, the whole message behind the I Way is obviously those pictures with the words, but, you know, it's nothing to do with what Wait, you look yeah, like. Yeah, or look, you know, yeah. yeah. Nothing so to do with that. right now. And um, to focus on that is just what we need because to, to really, for anyone to be the happiest in their life and in their body, it's regardless of what you look like. What you look like is irrelevant. So beyond body confidence as a thing, what do you do? Are you a, a, a hub for kind of helping people through things? You give tips, you give advice, like yeah. what is it? So we've just launched and ran two weeks ago our first event. So a lot of this we want right. to bring, as we've said, to on the ground. Okay, yeah. great, we don't so just, Yeah, we don't yeah. just want to be just online. And that mm -hmm. was incredible. So it was a sleepover, literally. Mm -hmm. nice. We had a really three hour intensive workshop with ourselves, with our five pillars, which we, we can go through at some point. Yes, please. Um, and then we had a panel of incredible women, um, all shapes and sizes, races, backgrounds, jobs, to give the women there as our guests um, this the gaze that it's it's beyond what we look like and, and what we've done as women and how we can celebrate uh, beyond what we what we are um, as women in, in our looks. <laughs> <laughs> and then we had yoga the next morning and essentially that was the start of this movement. So yeah. we definitely want to run more events out. We've got very exciting summer campaign yes. coming up. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you want to tell us more about that? Um, well, it's a lot. Uh, so, with summer coming up, we hear a lot about bikini mm -hmm. body, <laughs> getting your bikini or getting your body back, down, yeah. ready for the yeah, summer. Yeah. And obviously, anybody's a bikini body. It's silly. Yeah. Um, but we we realise that a lot of women are going to feel that pressure and see those yeah. messages from that diet culture just coming in every day. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so starting we're, now, really. It's starting now, yeah. I've seen things. Well, as soon like, as the yeah. sun comes out a bit, people get right, yeah, right. forward. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we're going to create some sort of campaign that is kind of um, going against that. Mm. So um, launching. So hopefully the campaign will be launching in May, and then we've got an event coming up in yeah, June. In so keep summer. an eye out for that. Okay. Yeah, so. And just very quickly, let's run through kind of your six tips for giving yourself self love. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Right, it's an inside out job. Inner confidence comes from having good self esteem and accepting who you are as a person. Yeah, yeah. So I think this is our both kind of joint realization that, you know, don't get me wrong, as women, it's, it's great to, to want to do your hair and, and dress, you know, we're both, we're both into yeah, that. Yeah, you're allowed to be, that doesn't right. mean, yeah. It's exactly, but it's also about being able to appreciate who you are when you look in the mirror, despite all of that, and celebrate everything about who you are as a person. And once you start working from the inside, that's when the transformation happens. Okay. Mm -hmm. Looking after your mental health, just as you would your physical. Eating healthy food doesn't always mean you have a healthy relationship with food. Mental health is the foundation of our entire well-being. 
Yeah. yeah, well, essentially, that's my entire journey wrapped into one. And mm. I think something we're both really passionate about is you can be as healthy on paper as it may seem, mm. you know, eating broccoli 10 times a day. If you're not happy and if you don't enjoy that food and if you've got a disordered and obsessive relationship with it, that's not health either. Mm. So just, again, looking inside, well-being, mental health, how do you feel, what emotions do you experience on a daily basis, and just making that really the important thing. Yeah. Acceptance, not aesthetics, having body confidence isn't much to do with what you look like. Positive body image is about how you feel, how you treat your body. I mean, it's all the same things here, mm -hmm. but packaged absolutely as it should be, like targeting the different things that yeah. stop looking on the outside. It's Definitely. all about the inside. Yeah. And I think a big thing is that word acceptance. Mm. Yeah. Um, and it's about, I think, a big thing for us for having good body image is that we're accepting it it doesn't mean we have to love it it doesn't yes. mean we have to be in the mirror but I love this I love this this I love is what this. we're sold it's just this is my body I'm yeah. just going to accept it and stop being so hard yeah. on myself and don't obsess over it yeah. right right. Like things like genetics come into play <laughs> yeah. yeah and that when you start things from a place of acceptance your life just gets so much easier mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. that's really good advice. Um, and just finally, rejecting diet culture, yeah. less objectification of the body, diversify your feed and your life. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. interesting. It's not just who you're looking at, it's who you're hanging out with too. Oh, absolutely. Well, literally, we've only known each other about a year and a half, mm -hmm. but I think definitely for me, Abby has just such an impact on thinking about who I surround myself with, the energy that I give out, and mm. that is such an important thing for how, how you value yourself. Yeah, definitely. And then also... Um, diversifying your feed so you are kind of following people who might not be living the same line of life as you you're going to hear different experiences yeah. what I've really learned about over the past couple of years is how um, fat phobic society is because yeah. I've been following a lot more plus size people as I am classed as a plus size model and um, realizing that and seeing the huge problem that we have in the society with that yeah. um, so you know you're learning a lot more if yeah. you're just following kind of different types of people widen your net yeah, yeah. absolutely all right, really interesting stuff. Thank you so much, uh, ladies. I'm sure you will have given much reassurance to many women watching. So thank you so much for joining us today. For more information on the ladies and body confidence, please do follow their Instagram, at Beyond Body Confidence. Everything will be linked below as always. Thanks again to the Sheer Lux ladies. We're going to be back on Thursday with tips on how to manage your money. And special guest, deliciously Ella, will be here. Very exciting. In the meantime, please do rate, review, subscribe, and tell your friends. Bye-bye.